Hey amigos, what's going on? Working back again on this iron head project. The last time you guys saw, I went ahead and put the top end together. I put the pistons in the cylinders, put them on the motor, put the heads on, torqued them down, you know, all that fun stuff. And you saw I was a bit unorthodox about it, but who cares? Anyway, it got done. So what I'm gonna do today, where I left off last time is, I'm going to, well, before I tell you what I'm gonna do today, I wanna to show you what I put on here. These are the oil lines that came off the motor and they bolt in right here. But in, in place of these oil lines, I went ahead and put these steel braided oil lines that just screw right in here and right in here. And they fit perfectly, even though I like the way the steel lines look. As far as function, I think this is just better. But one of the other things I need to do that I left off amongst many other things about this bike is I need to go ahead and put my push rods in. So this will be a video about how to put your push rods in an iron head motor, how to adjust them and all that fun stuff. Okay. But before we do, this is what I got happening right here. I went ahead and I took apart my push rod tubes and I got everything cleaned up, ready to go, uh, ready for new cork gaskets and stuff like that. There's my gasket set right over there. And there's my push rods right here. So, okay. So what we want, this is your main body right here. This is your uh, part that slips down inside the main body, but this goes in between it like that. And there's a spring that goes in here like so. There's a metal washer that goes on top of that spring. And then after that, you take your cork gasket, slip it over your tubing, and they go like that. This end goes down on top of your lifter block well, this right here goes up inside the rocker box. It just goes up like that, sandwiched like that. And your push rod goes down inside of here like that. So anyway, you guys get the picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these push rod tubes together, put the new cork gaskets in, and, uh, and I'll show you guys how we put push rods in an iron head motor and get the adjustment right. Okay, now we've got the gaskets in. The next order of business is, see these, these are your tappets slash lifters, whatever. You wanna make sure that you have these lifters all the way down. In other words, there's a cam per each lifter and you wanna make sure that the cam lobe is all the way from the bottom side of that lifter so that this lifter will be all the way down whenever you go and make your adjustment. Now what you're gonna to have to do to get your lifters in position is that you're gonna to have to be able to turn your motor over. Now, you can do it by bumping the starter, which I don't have the electrical hooked up, so that's not an option. Uh, some people just jack the bike up, put it in fifth gear, t rotate the rear wheel to move the lifters or turn the motor over, which I don't have my linkages hooked up. So, But what I do have is kick starter. So I'll turn the motor over that way. All right, I got my kicker pedal on the shaft right here. And also what you want to do is pull your spark plugs out to make it a little easier because the compression along with the valve spring tension when you get your other push rods in, when you get to your last one, are going to work against you. What I'm going to do, give this thing a little bit of a push. And you can see that lifter move. That front one's going down. Might have to give it a little bit of a push. Maybe. There. my push rod sitting on top of the lifter right there and just for convenience sake I'm gonna take this bungee cord to hold this push rod tube up out of the way so I can do what I need to do next what you're going to want to do you'll see that this is hex shaped 
and there's a jam nut on the bottom so this would be a half inch and this would be a 7 16 and if you can't find your 7 16 a good 11 millimeter wrench will do too and what you're going to do is that you're going to rotate this top part until you get all the slack out of the push rod when it stops it means it's going to be touching that rocker arm so i'm turning it like so Okay, I just felt it stop. That means that the push rod is butted up against the rocker arm. And now what I want to do now, I want to take this jam nut and run it all the way down. Okay, now I've got the push rod butted up against the rocker arm on the top side. And I have my jam nut all the way down, finger tight. Now what you don't want to do is that you do not want to run this up so hard against the rocker arm that you won't be able to spin, freely spin this push rod around like that. After you tighten that jam nut down, you don't want to feel any up and down slack with the push rod. What you really want is to be able to freely spin it. And you want to do this while the engine is cold, not while it's hot. Okay, it looks like I got lucky the first time. I don't feel any slack up and down. You just want to be able to spin this push rod, but it's at the same time, no slack up and down. I can't stress that enough. I'm gonna put my half inch wrench right here. I'm gonna take my 11 millimeter slash 7 16 and I'm gonna run this jam nut down. All right, it's good and tight. I can still spin the push rod, no up and down slack. And I'm gonna set this thing down just like that. And then you're going to want to work this piece of tubing up and just get it up inside that rocker box like that. Then you're going to take your keeper, you're going to place it up in there like that, preferably use a flathead. And then you're going to pry this thing down and just kind of work it the best you can. And sometimes you don't get it every try. So you just got to keep trying until you get it. Maybe I'll try a different screwdriver. And it's in there like so. Okay, and that's how it's done. You may never own an iron head, you may never own an old bike, but if you ever do and you came upon this video and didn't know how to adjust the push rods, then that's how it's done, okay? And those of you who know a better way, leave comments down below of how I could have done it better because as I say, I am by no means a professional. So anyway, it's raining pretty hard outside. I don't know if that's coming up on the camera or not. And uh, I got to wade through some water to get back to the house. So I appreciate you guys for watching. And if you like what you saw, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for more videos coming up and more content about this saga right here. So, and if you haven't seen anything else other than this video on this bike, go ahead and check out the playlist on this bike and you can see how it all began. Again, I appreciate you guys for watching. And you guys keep the rubber side down and you be good to yourselves. And thanks a lot.